as you may already know, I wear glasses full time. Without them, I can see okay, but not well. If you're like me, then you would have thought to yourself, why don't I just get laser surgery? So I've been doing a lot of research and even had my eyes examined to see if I was eligible. And in this video, I wanted to share with you my thoughts on laser surgery, what your options are, and what you should know before considering it. When it comes to laser surgery, there are three options, PRK, LASIK, and SMILE. Each of the three options represent the three generations of laser surgeries across the last 50 years. But you'll find that surgeons to this day still perform all three. To understand this, let's take a look at each example in more detail, starting with PRK. Step 1. Remove the corneal epithelium. This can be done with either an alcohol solution, a blade, a brush, or the laser itself. Step 2. Use an eczema laser to reshape the cornea. If you are nearsighted, then you want the cornea to be flattened. And if you are farsighted, like myself, then you want the cornea to be steepened. Step 3. Place a bandage contact lens in place and wait for the eye to heal. The epithelium will regenerate taking on the new shape and as a result give you lasting clear vision. Who is it for? The best age group for the surgery is 18 to 55. This is because any older than this and you'd be better off just having a lens surgery. This is a topic that deserves a video on its own so I won't get into it here. But if you want me to cover it in a future video, then let me know in the comments below. For now, PRK is able to correct mild forms of hyperopia, myopia, and astigmatism, and has been shown to be just as effective at correcting myopia as LASIK. What are the advantages? This procedure works best for those that have relatively thin corneas, as the laser only treats the anterior surface of the stroma. The endothelium, the back, is a very delicate structure, so it's best to always treat the cornea, leaving the endothelium undisturbed as much as possible. If your cornea is thick enough, then none of this would be a problem. But for thinner corneas, PRK may be the safest alternative. In some cases, PRK may be the most affordable procedure, as newer technologies tend to be more expensive so it might be good for those that are working on a budget. What are the disadvantages? PRK has the longest recovery time among our three contestants. The downtime is about a week of mild discomfort before you can start driving again, and it may take up to a maximum of 12 months for the vision to fully stabilize. During this time, it is recommended to wear sun protection as there is a small risk of developing corneal haze if you are exposed to too much sunlight. Discussion PRK is the OG of laser surgery. The technique has been around for the longest and is a very similar procedure to a technique called LASIK. From my research, there wasn't any functional difference in outcomes between PRK and LASIK. And what I found is that most surgeons nowadays just prefer to perform PRK for its simplicity. Moving on to LASIK. How it's performed. Step 1. Use a femtosecond laser to create a flap. Step 2. Use an eczema laser to reshape the cornea. Step 3. Put the flap back on and wait for the eye to heal. Unlike PRK, in LASIK, the flap is returned to its original position, leading to a much quicker recovery time. Who is it for? Again, this is best for those that are aged between 18 to 55. Any older than that, and you're just better off having a cataract surgery. LASIK can correct up to high levels of hyperopia, myopia, and astigmatism, and has the largest range of correction among the three surgeries. What are the advantages? LASIK has the fastest recovery time out of the three options. 
The downtime is about 24 hours and you're back to normal. The procedure is painless and usually the vision recovers overnight, taking up to a maximum of 3 to 6 months for the vision to fully stabilise. What are the disadvantages? This procedure is not suitable for those with thin corneas or chronic dry eyes. This is because the surgery involves removing the corneal tissue in the middle of the stroma, and thin corneas tend to be more fragile. Again, if your cornea is nice and thick, then none of this would be a problem. Reports show that about 0.8% of patients suffer from long-term dry eye post-surgery while the remaining 99.2% recovered to baseline after 12 months. Discussion LASIK can be considered as the first choice for most surgeons. This is because of its excellent recovery time, visual outcome, and track record. But for those with chronic dry eyes or thin corneas, LASIK may not be the best option, and an alternative like PRK or SMILE may need to be considered. Moving on to SMILE. How it's performed. Step 1. Use a femtosecond laser to carve out a lenticule. Step 2. Carefully dissect the carvings using a surgical spatula. Step 3. Pinch the lenticule out with a pair of forceps. Who is it for? Like with the other two examples, this surgery is best for those that are aged between 18 to 55. Smile surgery, however, does not correct hyperopia, so it's only suitable for correcting myopia and astigmatism. But who knows, things may change in the years to come. It can correct up to high levels of myopia and astigmatism and is perfect for those that need to return to contact sports ASAP. What are the advantages? This procedure does not involve creating a flap, like what we saw in the other two examples, and is reported to preserve corneal strength and nerve function more effectively than the competition. This surgery combines the advantages of both PRK and LASIK as it has less risk for higher levels of myopia and a very short recovery time. What are the disadvantages? This surgery unfortunately does not correct hyperopia and has a slightly longer initial visual recovery than LASIK. So in some cases, LASIK may be more appropriate. Smile surgery, also being the latest advancement in technology, may come at a higher price point. Discussion. Laser surgery has evolved over the course of about 50 years and since then, generations of surgical techniques have emerged. SMILE can be considered to be the latest evolution in laser surgery, but that is not to say that older generations are less effective. The literature states that SMILE and LASIK are very comparable in terms of visual recovery and outcomes, but SMILE still takes the slight edge, particularly for dry eye patients. My laser story. I've been wearing glasses full time for about 8 years now. My prescription is hyperopic astigmatism, which means I can still see in the distance okay and drive without glasses, but not well. I wanted to make a video about laser surgery for a while, and what better way to do that than to have the surgery done on myself. So I finally reached out to a good friend of mine, Dr. Ben LaHood, who works as a laser surgeon here in Adelaide. I went through the normal process of any regular patient and sat down with Ben to go over my results. On paper, it seemed like LASIK was the option to go for. It has a fast recovery time, it can correct hyperopia and astigmatism, and has an excellent track record. But when we took a closer look at the Pentacam, a special machine that maps out the front of the eye, it showed that my astigmatism was irregular, meaning that my eyeball shape was not fully symmetrical and that it could pose a small risk if anything bad were to happen to my eye in the future. So the safer option was for me to go with PRK, and that would minimise my potential risk of complications, albeit still being low. Another thing that Ben had explained to me was that when you correct hyperopia with laser, you need to steepen the cornea for the vision to be clear. 
but the way in which the cornea regenerates may lead to the correction regressing quicker than if you were to correct for myopia, which is what most people get the laser surgery for. This means that in my case, I may have to go back to glasses sooner than what I would have hoped for. A big shout out to Ben who has his own Instagram page where he shares cool information about eye surgeries. He's helped me out tremendously on this video and was very honest and transparent about the whole process. I'd recommend following him on Instagram as he is the expert in eye surgeries. To sum it up, when people ask me whether I would recommend laser surgery, I would say this. There are people who are more suitable for laser surgery than others. If you're an adult with nearsightedness and or astigmatism with a healthy set of eyes, then you would make the best candidate. Think about the benefits and risks. If the benefits outweigh the risk, then sure, it sounds like a good idea. But in my case, my eyeball was weirdly shaped. I'm farsighted and astigmatic, but can still legally drive without glasses. So the benefits did not outweigh the risk. If I was nearsighted and have normally shaped eyes, then would I have had the surgery? Most likely. But given my circumstances, I decided not to take on the risk, although I knew it was still low. And at the same time, I'm very disappointed because it would have made an excellent YouTube video. All in all, I think laser is great for those that would significantly benefit from it, and is extremely rare nowadays to come across horror stories. But the importance of having the eyes thoroughly checked, like myself, to look for any potential risks with an ophthalmologist cannot be ignored. For me, I guess I'll just have to stick with glasses for the time being until I reach my mid-50s to consider a refractive lens exchange. If you've learned something new, or at least found something useful, then yay, thumbs up to you. If you want to thumbs up back, then it'll be greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.